so today's session is called Recruiting Volunteers for Nursing Home Ministry. And I would like to start by saying my hope is that for those who might be a little bit timid or experience a lot of unsuccessfulness in recruiting help, that uh, today you would learn how to recruit at least one person. So that's what my goal is, is to enable you to recruit one person. And my thought is if you can recruit one, then in time you can recruit more. And let's be successful with the one. All right. So uh, I want to begin by laying a foundation for recruiting people for this mission field. And I want to do that by uh, opening up some scripture. We're going to look in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. This is a fairly familiar scripture, but it's very pointed to how to recruit help. It says here in uh, Matthew 9, 35, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching the, in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he, came, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. So I think this is really valuable for us that Jesus is giving a very specific directive how to recruit help. And it starts with prayer. We have to be willing to obey Jesus in this directive to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth workers. But we also will do well to consider a couple other points that are on your outline. And that is that Jesus has compassion for his elderly sheep. It's important to realize that while I'm trying to do something, because we all want help, that's why we're together today. We all want helpers. Jesus is saying, pray for it. Ask the Lord of the harvest to bring them. And he's also reminding us that he has compassion on the people that he has called us to serve. It's his will that none would be lost and that he himself came to seek and to save them. And so his heartbeat is behind what he has commissioned us to do. And that is to be part of his great rescue mission. And so when I think about praying, I'm not like praying with this, oh, I hope he hears me or I hope he'll help me. What I do think, though, is that a lot of times we try to do things without acknowledging him first, without seeking him and asking him the way he wants us to do it. Because even all the tips and ideas that I might share today, they could be helpful. But if there's no prayer, it's fruitless. I think we all know that as Christians, but it's a good reminder for us to be getting that in that place. So with that being said, I just wonder if uh, I can ask Chris, uh, you're one of the names I remember. Chris, would you be willing to lead us in a word of prayer before we begin uh, sharing some ideas and tips? Sure. Uh, thank you, dear Lord. I just bring all of us to, to you this morning that we do. We, we come to you in prayer. We come to you with the guidance of the Holy Spirit because there are sheep out there that are they're thirsty for you. They're, they're just dying for that drink of water. So yes. let us be those instruments, those vessels that you use. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit and just guide us in, in the way that we should go. And I ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. I'd like to begin by talking about what I call the spirit of recruiting. Uh, recruiting the right team members is more like a process of cultivating relationships. It's not a, a thing I do, it's a process. And in order to get the right people on the bus, if you will, 
we have to be willing to know them a little bit. Sometimes we can recruit the wrong people, believe it or not. But if we are prayerful and building relationships before we ask them to be involved, we can know the people that we're inviting. And that is the key, next key is that uh, I believe that there are Christians in almost every church, every church group, I should say, who would be willing to serve the Lord in the nursing home mission field, but they absolutely need to be invited. I believe there's a lot of Christians that are saying, Lord, I would serve you, but I don't know where. Give me a sign. Well, you might be that sign when you come up and say, hey, Joe, would you be interested in, you know, obviously you have some kind of a relationship with them, a little bit of connection, but to invite them. I have a friend who started helping in our ministry. He just retired and uh, he was praying. I didn't know this, but he was praying for the Lord to lead him in what he would be doing with his time now that he was retired. He was really ripe for the kind of harvest I was looking for. So, but I, I want to say though, the concept of inviting is key. It's it's more of a cultivating process and inviting. And I, I want to talk a lot about that aspect today. So there are hurdles though. When we are asking people, there's a lot of things in life that's going on. As you know, they might be, uh, they might feel that they're, uh, underqualified or unworthy. And this is so true of so many people, but they are, all, and also they might be overcommitted to so many other ministries or responsibilities. If I know a person well enough, and I know that they're overcommitted with a lot of things that kind of don't matter, I might say to them, I'm good with you not being able to come, but I just want to encourage you to pray about Will God allow you to do something in this life that will matter for all eternity? And in the ministry that we have in a nursing home, what you would do there could matter for all eternity. And just kind of encourage them to really think about how they might adjust. The other thing, too, is when a person is overcommitted and they want to help, it may take a month or two or several months before they're able to adjust their schedule and make room for it. But we can invite them to make room in time. The other uh, thing is that some people never even thought about outreach to a nursing home. The church is so focused on so many other kinds of ministry, but we can create awareness even in that church. If we, if we, invite our pastor to consider even the possibility. Some of them don't show any interest at all because they've never really thought about it. It's not something that most seminaries in uh, Bible colleges teach about, but it is something that the Lord obviously is quite concerned about, quite, uh, quite adamant about us doing what we can. So I do believe that the hurdles can be overcome if we pray, Lord, um, I, help me to know what to do. And so I guess what I'm saying, too, is in a relationship, we don't just stop when a person says, I, I don't know. I don't think so. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But the relationship allows us to know what kind of person we might be inviting but the thing is, is, as we're creating awareness, we need to let particularly leadership type people in the church know what God said about pure and faultless religion is to look after orphans and widows in their distress. And if we're doing that, we might avoid polluting ourselves by the world, which is what the rest of the verse talks about. God will use the willing and even the timid, unassuming believers, and many of them are sitting in the back pews waiting to be invited to help fulfill your need in, an, in your, your, for a team member. I've seen this so much. This is where I came from, the back pews. I knew that I was unworthy. I knew that I was uh, underqualified to do any kind of ministry work, but I also knew that God wanted me to serve him. 
And so I was willing. And that was about 40 years ago. A lot has changed since then. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you about the invitation. So if you can turn to page two. <clears throat> In your outline and did i say i'm sorry if i didn't that everyone should have an outline and in the outline where it's underlined on my powerpoint screen uh in blue that's where you want to be writing in the blanks and sorry i didn't mention that earlier so i want to speak now about the invitation because what we have found is to personally invite a person is the most effective approach to recruiting. We don't want to pressure a person, rather that we invite them and encourage them to come. And what I find is if we can share a, a testimony of what God is doing in the home, it people want to be part of something God is doing. And so it will be uh, an encouragement to them to come and see and find out what God is doing or what they might be able to do to participate in it. We also want to provide just a little bit of written information for them. I and want to encourage you to keep in your Bible just a little, maybe four, quarter page or third page uh, information sheet that tells uh, that gives an invitation, tells what you're doing, where where you're doing it, and what times, just some basic information, and then contact information for yourself. If you can do this, that because when you tell people something, they'll remember about a tenth of it. But if you write it down and you give them and say, would you take this and think about it and pray about it and give me a call, let's talk about it. Let's go out for coffee or something and uh, let's, you know, meet at the church or something and, and before the service or after the service. And that written information is going to be really a helpful tool for you. Now, there's another approach that I would encourage, and that is a, a public announcement. Now, this has this requires that we uh, have permission and we get uh, a schedule and things like that from the leadership of the church, but a brief presentation of the need and a call to action is something that kind of tells the whole church, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it. Now, we have published a book called In the Garden with Jesus and Friends, and in this book, we give a uh, kind of a template of a presentation that you can use you know, you can tweak it the way you want, of course, and uh, that's available in our uh, resource store. And then after you give your announcement, you want to be able to invite people because you don't want to give all the information during this announcement, but you want to have an information table in the foyer or the back of the church, however your church is set up. And that's where you want to give a little bit more information written again, uh, where you're going, what you're doing, uh, and some information to contact you if they're interested. It's really helpful to have your yourself prepared for the people to come in. Here's the thing is that I have found in almost every church that I've presented and others have that have talked to me, there are people in the church who are willing to investigate. One of the challenges is that you might get 10, 15 people sign up. Within the first steps of moving forward, you'll lose almost half of them. It's just the way it is. And it might be our own faults, I don't know, but follow-up is really key. And that's why I have here in this next part, it's very important that you follow up. It's it's so important. And if you don't, you'll lose even more than half. But even with follow-up, see what happens is people get emotionally connected to your presentation. And they'll say, yeah, I want to do that. And then they go home and they face reality and they can't. 
but we can still follow up and say, well, maybe today you can't do this, but perhaps if you pray about it, God can help you adjust your schedule and your responsibilities to the place where you can do it. And I would warn you against, or just to be careful with the guy that comes up or the gal that comes up and says, I do these 15 things. I would like to add this other one. I think that people shouldn't be doing 15 things and then just come and do a quick nursing home visit. What you're looking for are team members, people who consider themselves a part of a mission work rather than just doing something. Now, they may start out just doing, but God has a way of hooking them. So just be mindful of these these uh, potential issues that are going to come along. So a few other items that, that are helpful for uh, recruiting people, we found this to be very helpful, is to invite the church to participate in a special event. So if you can make an announcement, hey, we're going to have a, a, a picnic or a birthday party or a special hymn sing or celebration on one of the holidays, we're looking for volunteers to come and help us. And so you'll get people who will come. And while they're there, you want to make sure that they're meeting some of the residents and connecting with some of the people there. And you'll be surprised which ones get hooked. Uh, again, we got to follow up, though. Once we have a, have a plan so that when they do express an interest, or even if they don't, to call them up later and say, hey, John, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you coming out and helping and mention something that they did that was helpful. And uh, would you like to come back? We go on Tuesday nights and or Sunday mornings or whatever, and would love to have you come once in a while and help us. So, or participate in what we're doing. Another one is... I wouldn't say this is uh, an easy one here, but every once in a while, your pastor would give a message from the pulpit that would be so pertinent to the residents in the home. And uh, you can say to him, Pastor, would you come and share this message with, uh, with the residents? They would be so blessed by what you shared today so you're trying to get him to share a specific thing that he already shared and uh when this could also be like if you need to have somebody's asking to be baptized or if you want to share in communion or an uh, annual memorial service there's a number of things that you can invite your pastor to do a one-time visit you don't want to get him I mean, some pastors want to. They want to be there every time. It's a rare occasion, but you don't want to try to encourage him to be there all the time and run the ministry and stuff like that. We need you there once. And when he's going to come, you want to ask him if he would be willing to invite some of the church members. Uh, hey, I'm going to go to ABC Nursing Home, and I'm going to be sharing there. If anybody else wants to come people will follow the pastor. Then again, what you want to do, as we've been saying, uh, we want to make sure that we follow up soon after the event. So I, I do want to say also, we have a booklet. It's just a little kind of a pamphlet with 12 ideas on how to recruit people. A number of these items will be shared today this little booklet will kind of be kind of a guideline for you to uh, follow different ways. There's no one way that works. And so we give a dozen different things that you can do so that whatever ones would work in your church, in your environment, uh, would be, you know, what you want to try to apply. Uh, I want to share a couple more things but before i do that could we open up for anyone that has something that i didn't mention that you've tried that actually works uh for recruiting help 
Anyone have any other ideas that haven't been mentioned yet that you've tried? Well, this is Chris, just really quick. Some, one thing that I've tried is uh, take it to the men's group of the church, you know, the different, and I have had some, some success, at least with people coming on the individual um, visits that we do. And um, also from the women's group, we one young lady has been very faithful. She's come every time we we visited the home where we just do like a praise and worship service. It's not a, not a big Bible mm -hmm. study or anything. It's just praying with them and, and doing music with them and singing with them. So the men's and women's groups at the church have been more fruitful for me getting people to come. Yeah, that's a good point, Chris, because the larger the church, the harder it is to get uh, platform time to announce your ministry. And uh, that's a, a lot of people are asking for platform time. But if you ask the Sunday school uh, teacher or one of the home group leaders or other smaller groups, you'd be surprised how open. And they'll give you more than the two-minute uh, spot that you'll get on the platform. They might give you the whole Sunday school moment, you know, time. And uh, so you'd be surprised how effective that can be. So, yeah, Chris, that was good. Thank you. Bill, I think also if uh, if you know of a Sunday school class or a senior adult group that may, someone may, or even the congregation, if they have a family member who's in a care facility, they're more, a lot more interested and concerned. And so that's an open door. And others, her friends and others may know friends. I think that would be a great uh, yeah. way to connect, make connections. Yes. And I would say this too, John, that's that's a very good point. I I have seen probably one of the primary hooks, if you will. I like to call them hooks, but one of the primary hooks is from somebody who has had a loved one in a care home. But there also is a time after their loved one passes on that there may be a reprieve time where they can't even think about going in for a season. And so we want to give them grace when there's uh, an unwillingness, if you will, to to go to go sure. in. Yeah. I can uh, tell you kind of how I was recruited uh, 10 years ago. It was uh, <clears throat> three people from the church went every Sunday and uh, one guy would kind of lead the service uh, and a, a woman played the piano for the singing part. And then her husband like handed out the the song books and stuff and so just one day they said hey do you want to come some sunday and see what it is so it was like there were already people there who had like a set routine right and it wasn't my responsibility to figure out what to do right so i just went and watched and the next thing i knew then i was spelling the guy who you know every other week went in and to do stuff and it just became more and more so they kind of like eased me into it oh uh, that's great that's that's really helpful Good, thank you. Anyone else? All right, well, let's come back to the PowerPoint. Thank you for those comments. I really appreciate that. Hey, Bill. Yes. One quick idea before you depart is uh, do a pizza party after a church service for people who want to get a little presentation on what they're doing. Uh, you feed them food, they will come. Yeah, just like a, a little uh, common a curiosity meeting almost. Right. Come and see what we do, hear about it. And, you know, on our website, we have videos that uh, might be inspirational for uh, inviting people or, um, you know, under the recruiting tab uh, of our video library. And that can be helpful, too, to uh, help complement your your uh, meeting, but that's really good too. Thank you, Brad. All right, so back onto the PowerPoint. The first visits with the team members. And so when you get some people that are willing to come in, you wanna make sure that, that you do a couple things to help them. First. You want to pray with them. It's so important. When men work, they work. But when men pray, God works through them. 
And so it's important that we spend a little bit of time praying with them. And then we want to provide uh, a little bit of an orientation for the person. It's so um, common for a person to come in and have no clue about what's going on. You're so busy managing the issues and they don't even know what to expect. And you're just kind of like, oh, hey, go do this. Can you do that? But what you want to do is spend a little bit of time sharing what they might expect to see and experience while they're there. And maybe one or two of the things that they could possibly be doing, uh, asking them, you know, would you be okay to do this or that? And if you're visiting one-on-one, -on -one, say, just come with me and we're just going to develop uh, caring friendships with a few residents. And if you're doing a group service, then of course you can get them involved with some of the, the, uh, activities. And then something important is to introduce your new team member to one of the cheerful residents. Don't send them over to uh, uh, Ratchet Joe, who is going to give them a hard time or, or not pay much attention, or to somebody who has severe uh, cognitive impairment where they can't really converse with the person. You want to start them out on, on uh, visits that will be easy and uh, tasks, if you will, that, that will be easy and that will help them to get oriented. In the beginning, if this is the first person's visit into a nursing home, everything's different things are a little bit awkward, things are a little bit uh, scary for some people, but we can help alleviate that through these uh, two points. I know that uh, we bring people in sometimes and they are like, they get it. They walk in and then they get it. Like on the moment they walk through the door, you can tell that that person is able to connect well with residents. They're not afraid. They're cheerful. They're not condescending. They're just really good. And so, of course, you can give them a little more to uh, do and be involved with if uh, if they're open to it. So at the end of the visit, uh, you want to just spend a little bit of time with your volunteers and ask them what their experience was like. Let them share. It was good or I had a really hard time when this happened or I'm not really sure if this is for me, and then uh, pray with them. Pray, spend time praying. Lord, uh, I just want to ask that you would guide my friend here and, and direct them. If this is a ministry you would like them to be involved with, guide them. And if not, just give them peace to step forward and, and, and walk on to the thing that you want them to do. So we're not clinging to them or clutching to them in any way but definitely having an openness uh, for what God might be doing in their life. I also want to encourage that we, one visit sometimes is not enough for a person to make a decision. If they're not sure, they're thinking about it, well, why don't you come back one or two more times and, and see what's going on from there. I find that after three visits, if they're not hooked, they're not going to be hooked. But uh, within three visits, that's when we see the most uh, the most assurance whether or not that person belongs in the ministry. So again, we don't pressure, we invite. So if you want now, I'd like to jump over to page five on your outline. For those who decide they want to participate in this ministry, we'd like to give them... Uh, responsibilities that connect with their giftedness their their willingness to uh, their willingness to uh, be involved and so on page five we have uh, what I call what is a nursing home ministry care team and in there you'll see five basic positions that we recommend to have available on your team now, there's the team coordinator, and we don't call this person a leader. Some people don't like to lead, but we can coordinate. 
it's kind of the same thing, but we don't feel like we're leading, especially if it's our friends uh, who are uh, participating on the team. We don't want to necessarily lead people, but we can coordinate uh, the efforts. And you'll see there's a description there. And then there's, of course, a Bible teacher. There is a song leader. There are helpers who play an amazingly important role. And there are also friendly visitors. A person can participate in any one of these roles or maybe two of them or more. What you want to make sure, though, is that you may be someone that can do every one of these things. You want to delegate it out even though you can do them all. It's so important that a person has the ability to exercise their gifts and talents if they have them or they they want to grow in them. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But this uh, this sheet has been given to you so that you can tweak it the way you want. And you can adjust the uh, the wording to match what works for your team. But we gave this so that you don't have to create the wheel from the beginning. All right. So we're going to go back to uh, the outline. If you want to turn to page three, we'll be on the top of page three. So I, I want to include this section with some what I would call helpful tips. There's a lot of things that we've learned over the years and I just want to bring out a few of them so that it might be helpful for the future. First is forgive those who decline your invitation. Sometimes uh, it's really hard for people to think about being involved in nursing home ministry. They, they consider it to be a very dismal environment. They they uh, maybe have had some bad experiences there. Maybe they're afraid of old people. There's a lot of different reasons. And so I decided a long time ago that I was not going to hold it against uh, those who say no. Also, especially your pastor, if he doesn't have an interest in it, you can forgive him. I believe that unforgiveness is one of the greatest hindrances in the Christian's life. If anyone is carrying unforgiveness, there's no way that they can be um, in the fullness of what Christ wants them to have in their life. It doesn't matter what the issue is. There needs to be forgiveness released into the hands of Jesus. And so if somebody doesn't do things the way I want, one of the first things I do, whether it's for this ministry or anything else, is I, I, I ask for grace to forgive them, and then I do forgive them. So I just wanted to bring that out as a kind of a really important tip. When somebody says, I'll think about it or pray about it, that means you have the permission to continually invite. I will invite a person over and over until... I feel like I'm wearing them out, but one invitation and they didn't call me, they didn't say anything, they kind of avoided me the last time I was in church. I don't think that's a reason to not connect with them again and say, hey, you know, are you still thinking about it? Where are you at? And the only thing I would say on that is no means no. The other thing that is important, and skip a couple bullets down, is to be connected with your church leadership. Care pastors, elders, administrators, uh, Sunday school teachers, home group leaders, deacons. These people all know other people. And if you are connected with them and say, hey, if you ever find anyone that has an interest uh, in nursing home ministry, or somebody's trying to figure out what kind of ministry God would have them serve in, would you send them my way? And give that person your contact information. They may not do it right away, but you'd be surprised how that will be helpful in the future. You want to assure all your prospects that 
Special gifts and talents are not necessary to be a huge blessing. Only the love of Jesus for the elderly, the love of Jesus and a love for Jesus and the elderly. You know, what I find is that a lot of people come in feeling unqualified without gifts, but every Christian who has the Holy Spirit living in him or her has gifts. They just might be dormant. And what we're trying to do is to help bring those gifts out. And so when they come and they find out that even in their shyness and their awkwardness or whatever, they can be well received and appreciated by the residents. That's when they start thinking about what they might want to be able to do. That's when you want to say, hey, would you like to uh, help with the, the music or would you like to help with the, the message? Uh, would you like to help with you know other aspects? And you'll be surprised how a person will start to blossom when they come in very timid. Again, that's where I came from, the back pews, not really thinking I had anything to give. But again, if we are born again believers and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we have gifts. We don't want to bury them. One thing that's really helpful too in the church if you share a praise report with your pastor write out uh something that the lord is doing or a praise for one of the team members who has gone the extra mile in their ministry efforts these are read by the pastor and sometimes they're even shared during a sermon and it lights a fire it's very valuable and it keeps the ministry in the mind of the pastor because one ministry out there that I've known all over 40 years of serving in this mission field, the one ministry that will be overlooked will be the nursing home. They'll stand up and say, well, we have so many opportunities for you to serve. You can be a deacon, you can work with the children, you can do this, you can do that. And often they will forget the nursing home as on on their list as one of the possibilities so i want to encourage you to send a praise report when you see something god is doing maybe once a quarter just let them know what's happening it's not a time to express disappointments or whine about the lack of support there's a time for that but not in this report build the relationship with joyful expressions of what God is doing. Amen? All right. So you want to ask uh, and find out who's in charge of it and ask if your ministry could be included with the church calendar or the PowerPoints or the whatever regular announcements they make for, or, uh, you know, the different ministries See if you can get yourself on there with contact information. Another thing is when the church has a ministry fair, a lot of them have been doing this once a year or once every two years, set up a booth and participate. I will tell you this about ministry fair booths. You have to be prepared with a sign up. Uh, having a little candy dish helps. Uh, there's some things that I can tell you about that. But one of the things that's the hardest is you have all your church members are going through. And when they notice that your booth is related to nursing home ministry, a lot of them will turn their head and look on the ground and keep walking because they're afraid of this ministry. But a cheerful cont countenance and, a, a, um, you know, when somebody looks for more than a couple seconds and like, oh, what's this? Then you have that opportunity to share something with them to invite them in. Again, you may have five or eight or 10 people sign up and you'll probably lose half of them before the day is over because uh, they'll find other ministries. But ask them, this is the key word. And this is, this is what Mother Teresa used to say when people asked her about her ministry. She always said this phrase, come and see. Friends, when people come and see, that's when God has the opportunity to hook them. But when it's out of sight, out of mind, it's not the same.
It's not the same uh, effect on our invitation. Finally, if your church is not into nursing home ministry and you just can't get people to do it, we usually know other Christians from work or maybe we know in the grocery store or other fellowships, other groups, things. I've been involved with nursing home ministry for a long time, and most of the teams that I've been with, because I'm always recruiting, uh, have people from other churches. Now, some churches don't like that, and you have to respect, if you're a member of a church, you need to respect what the, the rules are, or the uh, mandates are in your church. But I would say this, that it's not a problem for two or three Christians from two or three different churches participate on a care team. Please don't let that be a hindrance. Uh, a person can come, you know, then you have a problem. Well, what do we call it? When they say, what church is it? Don't call it your church. Call it the Bible fellowship hour with, with, or whatever. Call it the sunshine group or the, the faithful friends group. Hidden treasures, one of them is called, or golden treasures just call it something else and uh, that way you always have the ability to bring others in finally uh, I, I want to say this that the value of one additional faithful volunteer is huge it's a synergy that takes place you more than double your effectiveness when another person comes and so I wanted to just read two verses out of uh, scripture that uh, that would remind us of the value of one person. In Philippians 2, verse 20, Paul writes this about Timothy. He writes this, I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, but you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. One faithful volunteer can have that kind of connection with you. Just that they're, they're like a, a amazing support to who and what you are and what you're trying to accomplish. I, I like to call it, they get it. And uh, I have a few volunteers like that, and they're amazing. And one of the other things, too, uh, it's a little different for me, maybe, but when your team grows to more than seven or eight people, you want to see who has the leadership qualities and encourage them to adopt another nursing home. The, let me back up and just say this, too, that Sometimes a, a group will just go to several homes once a month. I really want to encourage you to focus on one home. And when that one home is saturated with the spiritual care that they need and you can't give any more, that's when you want to start looking at another home. Or if your team has grown large enough, then you want to have that other team uh, look into another home. I know that that might not be the way some of you are already doing it, but in the book, In the Garden with Jesus and Friends, we explained a lot of reason for that. And I would highly recommend if you are leading a team or wanting to start a team, that you get that book. The other uh, scripture verse I'd like to share with you is uh, out of Ecclesiastes 4.9. It says here, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. And again, adding one is like synergy. It, it multiplies your effectiveness. So I just want to encourage the value of one. So, and I say that because let's say you have a ministry fair or you give an announcement at the church and only one person has said they would do it. Value that person. Be a blessing to that person. Okay, I want to move into the topic of keeping your team members. 
First, I will say that this phrase has been part of my life for a long time, that the kingdom of heaven is built and advanced through relationships. I think we all know this deep inside, but we have a relationship with Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and then all the people that he brings into our lives. If those relationships are healthy, holy, and godly, and right, together we advance the kingdom of God. It's God's will that we bear much fruit, showing ourselves. It's His to his glory, rather, and his will. But it's to his glory that we bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples. Unity and togetherness. I want to bear much fruit, but I'm finding I'm limited to what I can do. But I can bear much more fruit with others. Together we bear fruit, much of it. Amen? Okay. So, the relationships need to continually be cultivated. We want to um, seek opportunities to help our team members or to grow closer to our team members. Also, let me just say this again. We want to seek opportunities to grow closer to each other, the residents, the staff, and of course, the Lord. We're creating a culture inside the nursing home is what we're really doing. And we're changing it from a home for the dying to a community of caring friends. And the resources that we provide, the other trainings that we provide, allow you to understand ways that you can do that. But our team has to be able to grow together. It's really valuable. We want to also allow for the team members to expand their capacity to participate in the various aspects of the ministry. If a person seems to have a gift of teaching or singing or, you know, even just leading the prayer, or maybe they're really excellent in one-to-one -one visits. If your team is large, you have four or five people. You don't need four or five people to run a group service. Have the ones who are great with one-to-one -one visit, go visit after the service is set up. Once the prayer, once the people are in and there's a prayer time, they would leave after the prayer and go visit other residents. So again, that's some of the stuff in our other teachings. So we need to learn about our team members and there's some easy things uh, to learn, but one of the things I've learned is some of the people are very structured and they need very clear guidance and some are less structured and they just need a goal. You know, we're, we're trying to do this, trying to accomplish that. And that really helps them to just be released, not micromanaged, and give them some space to grow. So some people have special gifts and talents that they want to exercise. And as I said, we want to help them grow in that. But some just want to be a friendly visitor and that's okay. Or just, they say, just a helper. Well, a good helper is a great treasure for your care team. And so I want to encourage, let them, let them be what they are, but also give them opportunity to grow. I think if we can provide uh regularly scheduled maybe quarterly or twice a year fellowship times together like uh brad was saying you know have a little pizza time uh that's a great time for fellowship and discussion and during that time that's when we give praise for the good that's going on in that ministry and we also discuss areas of concerns and needs we don't want it to be a session where we're going to nail joe to the wall for the thing he did last time or anything like that, but that those sometimes things need to be done in private. But we can say questions like, what do you think we can do that would make uh, our team more fruitful? What do you think we can do to, uh, to help the residents grow closer to Jesus even better than what we're doing now? What are, what are some of the things we can do? And allow that kind of discussion to be brought out 
also want to share news about the nurse the nursing home mission field and if you're you're probably on our newsletter uh because you know about this zoom but if you're not on our newsletter i want to encourage you to get god cares news because there's a lot of articles that we share about what people are doing and how god is using them and if you have an article you want to share you can send it in for uh consideration and if you don't mind a little bit of editing we would be very happy to share your story as it relates to what we're trying to accomplish uh in the in the newsletter you'll find out about upcoming training programs we we try to do something at least every two months if not more than that and then finally you want to recognize special events of your team members uh, you don't have to do a big thing about it but just recognize it let them know that you care that uh those things are valuable to you okay let's wrap things up on page four on page four i just have this statement god cares ministry is here for you we're here to help you we believe in servant leadership and what we want to do is we want to help you thrive in the nursing home mission field if you have a need reach out to us and we want to encourage you to become a part of this growing network to to belong with us we we have the newsletter you can contact us through the emails or you can call our office we're here to help you thrive and if you get our newsletter or, or check out our website, you can stay connected. Uh, there's just a number of things that are available to help you grow your ministry. Again, our website is another place. You'll, you'll find training programs on there. Visit our store. There's a number of resources that would be helpful for your ministry. So we're here to help you. That's all I have. Hey, thank you for your time. It's been a great time. We actually ended on time. It's 2.30. It's exact. So <laughs> praise God. We're done. <laughs>